Today has just released a game-changing consumables mechanic, which allows you to bring a set of power-ups which you can use at any point in the game. There's a total of 13 different power-ups, ranging from a grenade, a supply drop, and a powerful nuke. In this video, I'll be showcasing every single power-up and giving my personal ranking of how good they are. So make sure to hit that like button and subscribe and let's get started. By the way, all the footage in this video is half speed, just so it's easier to see what the power-ups do. Starting off, we have the grenade. You can select to throw it at any spot on the track and it deals 100 splash damage. That can be pretty useful in the early to mid game. However, in the late game, it's really not going to be doing much for you. 100 just isn't enough to deal with the late game crowds. So I'm going to give this a low C tier. It's just not super strong or interesting. Next up, we have the flashbang. When throwing it, after a couple of seconds, it explodes and stuns enemies temporarily for 4 seconds. I say that this power up is much better than the grenade, since the grenade falls off really quickly, while the flashbang is useful through the entire game. While it doesn't work on final bosses, it can be very helpful against things like the tank. So I'm going to rank it as a B tier. Pretty solid consumable. Next up, we got the barricade. The barricade can be placed at any spot on the track and it has 150 HP. As enemies ram into it, it deals damage and loses health. I'd say this is a pretty great option against early game crowds since they don't have a lot of health, so you can get one of these down and just farm pretty safely. I'm also going to give this a B tier since 150 damage isn't going to be doing much in a late game. Next up, we got the supply drop. When using this consumable, it spawns in a supply crate, which after it slowly falls down, you can collect from 1200 cash. This is extremely powerful as if you use it in the early game, it can give you a huge head start in your farming. Farms end up snowballing, so this makes the rest of your game incredibly easy. I'm going to have to rank it as a solid S tier. With a single use of this consumable, your economy will be significantly better and you'll probably win without much of an issue. Also, fun fact, if you stand underneath it, you die. Next up, we have the airstrike. This ability calls in a fighter jet, which drops six explosive bombs that deal 100 damage each. So in total, it'll be dealing 600 damage. This is a lot stronger than something like the grenade and can actually be used in the late game. It also has a significantly bigger explosion, so it'll be taking out larger and stronger crowds. I'm going to rank this power up as a solid A tier. It's a great option against crowds, but it's not nearly as good as something like the supply drop. Next up, we have the Molotov. This works kind of like the grenade, but instead starts a fire that applies the burn effect for 6 seconds. This is really good at taking out crowds of enemies, and arguably just a better version of the grenade. Because it's a lasting effect and not just a single explosion, it's able to take out a much larger amount of enemies. So this is a great option against breakers. Unfortunately, I don't know the exact amount of DPS, but it seems like it deals roughly 8 DPS. That is fantastic in the early and mid game, however, it's not going to do much in the late game. It also melts 15% defense, which is pretty good, so I'm going to rank it as a low B tier. It's not as good as something as the flash grenade, but it's still pretty helpful. Next up, we got the UAV. Upon activating, it spawns in a drone, which flies around the map for 30 seconds. The drone gives all towers hidden and flight detection, and increases the range of each tower by 30%. This is extremely useful. Previously, if none of your towers had any hidden detection, you were guaranteed to lose. But now, you can bring a loadout that has no hidden detection and still be able to win. This makes towers like the Pursuit significantly better, as it was previously unable to deal with hidden enemies. Also, you no longer have to bring any towers to deal with flying enemies as you can just use the UAV. On top of this, the 30% range boost is super nice and it's almost as much as a max DJ. Unfortunately, power-ups are disabled in hardcore mode. The UAV would have been super helpful against lead balloons, so this is a bit of a shame. If it wasn't disabled in hardcore, I would have put it as an S tier, but I'm still going to rank it as a high A tier. It's a great consumable and can make certain towers significantly better. Next up, we got the Napalm Strike. When activated, it sends in an aircraft which drops down a flaming puddle of napalm. It works like the Molotov and sets enemies on fire. The fire deals 5 33 DPS and lasts for 10 seconds. Surprisingly, unless I'm missing something, this is worse than the Molotov. The Molotov deals more damage and melts 15% defense. So I'm going to have to rank this as a C tier. I'm honestly really confused that the Molotov seems to be better as the Napalm Strike is an entire rarity above it. Next up, we have the Damage Flag. This can be placed anywhere on the map and it gives all towers within its radius a 40% damage buff and lasts for one minute. It also has a massive radius, so you can fit a lot of towers within it. I don't think I need to explain why this is so overpowered. A 40% damage boost is going to give you an insane amount of extra DPS. You can probably fit almost 40 towers within it. Also, because of its really long duration, you can place a single flag on the final wave and make it magnitudes easier. So I have to rank this as an obvious S tier. 40% damage is a huge buff, and this should probably be nerfed. Next up, we got the range flag. It functions just like the damage flag, except this one boosts your range by 20% instead of boosting your damage. It also has the same really long 1 minute duration. Unfortunately, range is much less helpful than damage, so it's not nearly as good. Also, 20% range isn't even that much, so I'm going to rank this as a low B tier. 
Next up, we got the cooldown flag. Again, this works just like any other flag, but it reduces the fire rate of nearby towers by 20%. This is much better than a range flag, but still isn't nearly as good as a damage flag, as it only buffs the DPS by 20% instead of 40. Still, this is a great help for defending, so I'm gonna have to rank it as a solid A tier. Next up, we got the blizzard bomb. When activated, this creates a huge blizzard, which constantly freezes all the enemies beneath it for 20 seconds. This is insanely good at stalling enemies. I mean, just look at how badly they get frozen. Using this can be a huge help against waves that have a lot of enemies, as it pretty much slows them to a halt. On top of this, it also lowers their defense by up to 50%, which is a lot. So because of the amazing support it gives, I'm gonna have to rank it as a solid A tier. I wouldn't say it's as good as a cooldown flag, but it's definitely a great option for making certain waves easier. Now, last but definitely not least, we have the nuke. When activated, it drops an incredibly powerful nuke, which deals 50,000 damage to the entire map. The explosion is so intense, it leaves the entire map in a deep red fog, which makes it really hard to see anything. This nuke deals enough damage to kill every enemy that's not a major boss, and is enough to 3-shot the Fallen King. Obviously, just because of the sheer amount of damage, this is an S tier. However, I'm gonna say in some cases, the damage flag can be better. If buffing a bunch of towers, the damage flag will probably add more than 50k damage against the final boss. However, if the map is filled with a bunch of enemies, the nuke is gonna be a lot more helpful. But that's every single new power-up in the game. Let me know in the comments down below which one of these power-ups is your favorite, and whether or not you think this was a good addition to the game. And if you enjoyed, make sure to hit that like button, and subscribe to join the Bluehead Mafia. Also, if you want to talk to me, consider checking out my Discord. We got some pretty cool features, like a custom party finder bot that will automatically pair you up with other people who are trying to do the same strategy. There's a link to the server pinned in the comments. And finally, I want to give a huge shout out to these channel members for supporting my content. If you want to add me as a friend on Roblox, or get early access to some of my videos, consider becoming a channel member. It helps me out a lot, and I really appreciate it. Anyways, that's it for this video, and I'll see you guys in the next one.